Well, um, it is a great honor to be here with so many other very talented speakers. Uh, fortunately for you, I'm not a very talented speaker, and uh, we completely misunderstood the memo to dress up for today for the event. <laughs> so um, uh, we have some slides. Let's see here. All right, so we, we covered that part. I'm best known as Ardix. And uh, with me here today, we have the nefarious Doom Knight Sepulcher. <laughs> and the evil Lich uh, Noxus. I didn't actually bring them with me, though. It, it's okay to boo. In fact, um, I don't think anyone has ever been booed off of a TEDx or a TED before. We have a chance for our first here tonight. <laughs> so at the end, um, I would like you to, to boo us off the stage. Our, um, our topics on storytelling, and in games, uh, we do interactive stories. And I think interactive stories are the future, so therefore games are somehow related to the future of storytelling. And we are currently running six uh, online games. Uh, all of our games are free, they play in your browser. Every week we update them with brand new content. That is, uh, we expand them with new stories, and also areas, and maps, and monsters, and how, how many people here have ever played one of our games? Okay, great. Um, wow. Okay, so the, the three of you that, that raised your hand, um, <laughs> I will get you that money, I promised you, after the, the talk. So um, I'd like to tell you how we tell a story in one of our games. Uh, oops, this way. <laughs> Mulligan. But uh, I'd like to tell you about a, a first. Um, something special we did and we've been doing since. Uh, we told a story in the video game to 10,000 people live um, who were all playing together at the exact same time. And every single one of them was the main character of the story. That is a live event where everyone was there experiencing the story together and all 30,000 of them were the main character of the story. But before I tell you that, uh, I kind of have to tell you how a story kind of works in our game. And the game that I'm talking about is Adventure Quest Worlds, which is our most uh, popular uh, online game. And in Adventure Quest Worlds, you, you play with other players. Um, you uh, log in, you can chat, and, and do all the things you've... Who here has actually played like an online video game? That is a scarily low number. Okay, good, so we're going to have a video game 101. <laughs> you go to one of these games, and uh, you create a character. Now, in most games and stories, you, you're reading about somebody else. You're playing somebody else. But in Adventure Quest Worlds, you're you. So you create and customize kind of a starter version of you. Then as you go through the game, you make decisions and choices and equip things to further define what you are and who you are in that game's storyline. So, you know, maybe your storyline involves wearing a banana suit. But um, <laughs> the game um, is pretty much about questing. And anyone who's played a video game before knows that you get an objective like, you go talk to the Dragon Slayer, and the Dragon Slayer, you must slay the dragon! And you're like, okay, and you go and you beat up a dragon. Because most of these video games, like most problems are solved with, with violence. That's like the meat of the video game. But it's the story that wraps why you get to do all the imaginary, fantasy, non-imitatable violence. And um, who doesn't like slaying dragons? So the game uh, has a major storyline. We came up with this thing called uh, Dracath and the Thirteen Lords of Chaos. And the guy in the center there is Drakath. Uh, the guy on the right is Sepulcher, and the guy on the... King Ultion, he's a good guy. And uh, there are these like 13 major villains in the world, and we didn't finish this all before we started. In fact, we, we launch a new segment of the game every single week. So if you go on Friday, for example, the next chapter of the story so much will, will be revealed, and everyone plays it and enjoys the release. Um, each area adds a new place on the map. Now this is as far out as you can zoom in the map, and you see how much space we have left to continue expanding the game. There are literally like hundreds of areas, if you click on any one of those, 
you would drill in like further and see all these dots. And to add a new area, we add a new dot on. When you click on that, you get to go to that area and play. And you fight your way up and get to fight cool guys like Asherion here, who is an evil chaos mage that inverts things. So um, just questing is maybe, maybe not enough, right? If you're telling a story, you need visuals. So we use cutscenes. Cutscenes are like these animated cinematics. You, um, you watch them like a video, but they star you. Like, you actually, you, the character inside the game, gets placed into the cutscene. This way, if you're talking to like this really cool character or you're having a showdown with the boss, it's your character that's having the dialogue. And you make choices that defines what you do in those. So maybe you chose to help the good guy. Maybe you chose to stab the guy in the back. We give as many options as we can, and we base this off of player input. And we always keep lots of danger because you're continuously under attack because these things are about a lot of fighting. Um, and so on. So anyways, uh, now I'd like to tell you a little bit about our 30,000 person live event where everyone was the main character of the story. But to tell this story, I need to tell you, we, we go to a lot of conventions. And we ran into this guy named Voltaire. How many people here know Voltaire? OK, Voltaire said your checks to the five of you would be uh, mailed after the, the thing. We showed up and we saw Voltaire perform. And there was an audience of 5,000 people. And they were all singing along to his songs. I mean, it was amazing. And one of my coworkers, a lovely young female, had the huge crush on Voltaire and was like, we need to go meet him. Please, 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 let's go and meet him. I said, sure. So after the show, he goes in this, this booth where he sells all of his merch, and he has a lot of CDs. So we stood in line, and we finally met Voltaire. And I told him a little bit about what we were doing in the games, and he was really interested. So we decided it would be a really good idea if we did something together. And we tossed around the idea of this live event thing that I really wanted to try, because I wanted to do something like, you know, Saturday Night Live in my, in my game, where every Friday we had a new musical guest, maybe some celebrities, and we would like draw them and put them into the game. So two years after I met him, I was up in New York uh, having sushi, and he lives in New York, so we got together. And um, I said, we, we should totally do this. He goes, he goes but Artix, um, you know, if we're actually going to do this, when? I said, well, Voltaire, you're, you're a spooky guy. So why don't we do this on Friday the 13th? And he goes, that is a great idea, except Friday the 13th was in two weeks, which is great because we do a new release every week. So this is double the time we have to normally do a release. <laughs> He goes, OK, you guys are, are crazy. And I said, yeah, but let's get started. And I went back home, and me and the team started writing a script. And we called it The Cursed Guitar of Skull Punch Island. <laughs> and the idea was that it was Friday the 13th. So naturally, some haunted island would open up in the middle of the ocean. And you, and Voltaire was asking for your help to go recover this cursed guitar, which would grant unseen powers to whoever wielded it. And we needed a pirate ship to take you there. But not just any pirate ship, a haunted pirate ship. And I'll kind of tell you in reverse order how, how we did this. So we promoted it for the two weeks we were building it. And it came down to Friday the 13th at sundown. And two hours prior to the event, 30,000 people showed up to come play. Now, you're saying, there's nine people on that screen. We couldn't fit 30,000 people into a single room. So to solve this problem, we created infinite instances of the room. Second question is, well, hey, this is a live event. How are you going to have all these people have the same experience? We built a command center that let us send commands to every room simultaneously. I could control Voltaire's character like one of those Chuck E. Cheese puppets. And uh, I could send messages. I could trigger special effects. And Voltaire wasn't physically with us, but he was on the phone while we were all gathered in this giant command room issuing commands to this server. So it was time to start the event. Now, we created a five-act play for this. 
And we needed the players to work together to push the storyline together, right? That was the requirement. Like, everyone has to be feeling the shared story at the same time. So, um, sunrise approaches. We begin the event. Everyone boards the pirate ship. Plays a cutscene. Everyone's sailing off to sea. And then, when you exited the cutscene, you're on the deck of the ship, and Voltaire tells you, um, so the undead pirate crew of this haunted pirate ship, they want you to join the crew, but you gotta be dead to do it. So now all the pirate crews are attacking the players, and the players are fighting for their lives. But we need to move the story forward. So how can the combined actions of all these players fighting these attacking pirates, undead pirates, push the story forward? We added the war meter! Now you guys remember those, those fundraiser things where you have a thermometer where we need this much money to keep the uh, recreational center alive. Well, in the war meter, we must defeat this many undead foes to move to the next scene. So the players, they, they, they're talking to Voltaire. Now, it's something important to, to add. If you talk to somebody in game, uh, an NPC, a uh, in-game character, that's a one-on-one -on -one thing. Nobody else sees that. The screen will pop up, and it's a very personal experience. So Voltaire would tell his character inside the game, would tell each player, you are the one that's taking me, and you are the guide, and everyone else is with us is, is here to help. And of course, when somebody else would access Voltaire, he, Voltaire would tell him the same thing. And because no one could hear that, everyone felt like they were truly the center of the story. They were the one taking Voltaire to this island. So the players battled through all the undead pirates. They finally won. And then the Bracken starts launching its tentacles up through the ship to try to pull it under. I know what you're thinking. Unleash the Bracken! Because we took the crack and we changed it to a B, because we're really creative like that. <laughs> So, another health bar, we, we battle down through the bracken, and then we failed. The ship gets pulled down under the water, and deep in the, in the bottom of the sea, we now have our first boss fight versus the bracken. We use the war meter like a health bar. Now, in video games, you, uh, you, know, you fight a, um, a monster. I like how I punch when I'm holding an ax. <clears throat> and every time you hit a monster, you da do damage, and its health bar goes down. In future releases, we actually made it look like a health bar. 30,000 players were all fighting the Bracken. Their combined actions were being summed up. I think that was for me, by the way. Their combined actions were all being summed up and added to this bar. So finally, they defeat the Bracken. And we had a problem because our game servers crashed. Now, we had 30,000 people two hours before the event began. And this is significant because we only had room for 30,000. That means we have no idea how many we're trying to get on. Best guess, maybe like 65,000. We're just slamming the servers trying to log on for those available slots. Not only did we crash the game, we crashed the entire game network. So um, I think some of the servers are still down. Um, we recovered, the show must go on. When they came back, they washed upon the shore of Skull Punch Island, they had made it. And of course there's more monsters, because that, that's how this works. And then there's a volcano, and naturally, there's a volcano on Skull Punch Island that you have to go into to get the cursed guitar. They traveled in, and there you are. Um, this is me playing, so my character appeared in the cutscene. And Voltaire is so happy, and as his character went and reached for the guitar, it transformed him into giant boss monster Voltaire! <laughs> so now the players had to fight boss monster Voltaire. And it was an epic battle. And they win, because, you know, the story's about you, so we need you to, to win. There's consequences if you lose or choose bad options, but, but you win. And then, like any good concert, you get to go visit Voltaire at his merch booth at the end, waiting in line. <laughs> but you don't have to go wait in line, because you're the hero. You get to cut straight to the front, and Voltaire will address you uh, personally. So uh, that is uh, how we told a story in a video game, live to 30,000 people, all who were playing together at the same time to move the story forward. And uh, every one of them was the, the main character of the story. <laughs> no, 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 
no, no, wait. We had a deal. No, 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 wait, wait. Too soon, too soon, too soon, too soon, too soon. No, and, and it's okay to boo for me, the, the, the young lady who's going on next. Make sure you not boo for her. She, she's a great speaker. Um, but that was an example of a weekly release. We do this every week in each of our six games and the two new ones we're making. This was the first, the prototype. We've come up with a lot of ideas since then. There are a lot of ways to make these stories more engaging and more interesting. Why are you guys laughing? That wasn't, that wasn't a joke. You know, trying to be funny up here, but really just funny looking. Um, so every, uh, every week we do this, and we have gotten to the point, oh, like we did this one with uh, the Might Be Giants. That's, yeah, sorry, sorry, going fast there. So what, uh, what I'd like to end on, I, I was gonna say this, in case you guys ever invited me back, um, I was gonna share a secret with you, the deepest, darkest, most dangerous secret of storytelling in video games. The one thing that, and I hope some of this has been applicable to the things you guys do in real life, but the next thing I have to say, if you remember everything I say before, and you add this thing to it, you will be able to do anything.